This video is an introduction of this new single board Z80 computer kit. Um, I'm going to explain what this kit is and does and how it's different from the original Z80 computer kit. This is the original Z80 computer kit that I introduced in 2012. Um, its purpose was to expose the inner workings of a simple Z80 computer system so a hobbyist or student could study how these simple computer systems work and by analogy how larger more complicated computer systems work. So this computer of course had a Z80 processor. It had a version 7 ROM with 2 kilobytes of storage for some simple test programs and for a simple monitor program and it had uh, two kilobytes of RAM. In addition it had uh, fast and slow clocks, the slow clock running a few cycles a second so that one could study the inner workings of the system at a slow clock pace. It had input ports that were these uh, small switches and output ports, which are these LEDs. One other feature is that it, it has buffers between the CPU and the rest of the system to allow easy addition of other boards through these expansion slots. As an example of what the original Z80 computer kit um, could do, um, I have the computer kit connected to the bus display that shows the activity on the system buses. I have the slow clock running just a few cycles a second and a program selected on these switches which is a port reflector. That is whatever is shown on the switches on these two ports is taken in by the processor and then put on the output ports. So if we take it out of reset and run this program <clears throat> you can see the activity on the system buses, the first thing it does is it gets the address from these switches and then jumps to it and now the program is running in a loop and shows the output of these switches on this port. Now if we turn the switches on over here after a few cycles you'll see this value appear on this port over here. Um, and you can turn these off and then these will turn off after a few cycles. So the original kit was meant to expose to the student or hobbyist all the details of the Z80 computer system uh, at a slow clock rate so you could investigate and see what was going on. Another expansion board for the original Z80 computer is this simple serial port this allows you to connect the computer through a serial cable to a dumb terminal or to a PC running a terminal emulation program so that you can enter data into the RAM of the Z80 computer through a keyboard. Um, there is a monitor program in the version 7 ROM at address 04C0 that allows you to use the serial port to do this and you can even load binary files of programs into the computer and uh, run them. Uh, this runs on the fast clock so when you turn it on you don't see anything going on because it's fast of course. Um, you can still use the output ports to display data uh, in programs if you want to. Here's an example of the Z80 computer with the serial interface running the monitor program. Uh, there's the greeting message and this is a list of the commands. Notice there are no commands for running the disk drives or for loading and running CPM. The final expansion of the original CPUville Z80 computer adds a disk and memory expansion board that allows you to run the CPM operating system. CPM was the first commercially successful operating system and ran on the original 8-bit microcomputers based on the Altair 
design and was in use up until the 1980s when the 16-bit computers and operating systems like MS-DOS made it obsolete. However, it's still a valuable operating system for hobbyist and student computers. So the Disk and Memory Expansion Board is here. It has a slot for a disk drive. It has 64 kilobytes of RAM to allow you to run CPM because it needs much more than the 2 kilobytes that's available on the original computer. And an upgraded ROM that has software in it that allows you to run the disk and the CPM system. This computer allowed for decoding of up to 4K of RAM and ROM, a memory space of 4K, but then it would wrap around. So one address higher than 4K would go back to location zero. So in order to allow the 64K of RAM to be accessed by the processor, one has to disable the memory decoding and hence the memory on the original computer. In addition, the original computer, the decoding for the input-output ports allowed for four ports. There were two ports here, uh, 0 and 1, both input and output, and two ports on the uh, serial interface for status and data for the serial port. However, for the upgraded uh, disk and memory expansion, six, at least six port, ports for the system are required, two for the memory configuration logic, four for the disk drive, and two for the serial interface. So uh, the port decoding also has to be disabled. So these jumpers allow you to disable the port decoding and the memory decoding on the original CPU computer so that you can now install a disk drive uh, that allows you to run the CPM operating system. Here is a terminal display of the original Z80 computer with the disk and memory expansion. Taken out of reset, it displays a brief greeting message for the version 8 ROM. That's because uh, I had to remove every unnecessary character to have enough space to get all the code in this 2K uh, ROM. Um, there's a list of the commands that are available in the monitor program. You'll notice at the end of the list, disk read, disk write, and CPM commands to operate the disk and start CPM. And entering the CPM command, you get the A prompt of CPM, and then you can ask the disk to do a directory display. And this disk has just a couple of files on it, but it shows that CPM is working on the computer now. After disabling the memory decoding and the input output port decoding on the original board, the only parts of this computer that are now active are the fast clock. The slow clock is active, but of course you can't run CPM on the slow clock. The CPU itself and the buffers that surround the CPU. The memory and the ports and the LEDs are inactive. So you can see that you could combine the function, you could combine the serial interface, disk and memory expansion, and put the CPU on a separate board and give you a simple CPM capable computer that would be uh, small and inexpensive. Here's the new single board simple CPM Z80 computer kit. It has the same processor as the original kit. The processor in this kit is not buffered, so it wasn't necessary because the whole system is contained on one board and removing the buffers gives more space on the board and allows for a less expensive kit. It has a 2K ROM. Here's the version 8 ROM, the same ROM that is used in the original kit with the disk and memory expansion and the 64K RAM with the uh, memory configuration control logic. That's the same circuit as on the disk and memory expansion. It has the same serial port with uh, UART as the serial interface board for the original computer. Um, this is the IDE connector for the disk drives. Um, there's a space behind it for uh, putting a disk drive in with a right angle uh, adapter so that the disk 
drive or module can lay down flat. That allows this board to be stacked with other boards, uh, in particular with the 8-bit processor. Um, the system connector has all of the Z80 signals on it, but not being buffered, it's not really meant for expansion boards, although you could probably make an expansion board. It's principally here for using this board as a system board for the 8-bit processor with the Z80 uh, removed. The reset circuit is a simple resistor capacitor timer that after you plug in the power, after about a second, the computer will come out of reset and start to run. It has a simple push button to reset it again if you need to. Uh, there's a couple of jumpers on here that allow for an external clock coming in. That's a CPU clock coming in from the system connector and an external reset coming in from the system connector. That's also for um, when this is used as the system board for the 8-bit processor and the reset buttons will be on the top and uh, it has single step uh, and slow clocks for use on that system. The single oscillator uh, is 1.8432 megahertz. It provides the signal for both the CPU and the UART and of course like the original CPUVIL Z80 kit with the disk and memory expansion. Um, you can put a IDE flash module in the disk drive slot on this single board computer and this will allow you to run CPM. Here is a similar terminal display of the simple CPM computer. Uh, in this case uh, you just power it up and the brief uh, greeting message is displayed. Um, you can hit the reset switch and it just starts the monitor program over again. Uh, you can display a list of the available commands which are the same as you saw before and can run CPM uh, with the uh, CPM prompt and list of the disk directory and see the same files. So functionally it's almost exactly the same as the original computer with the disk and memory expansion. The difference is that there's no reset switch. There is just a reset button and when you plug it in it automatically comes out of reset and starts running. This concludes the comparison of the original CPUVIL Z80 kit with the disk and memory expansion and the new single board Z80 simple CPM computer kit. Um, this kit has the functionality of this plus this plus this on a single board and for those who would like to build a kit that just goes directly to running a CPM capable computer this would be your choice. If you're interested in the details of how a simple microcomputer system works then the original kit may be more suited. This is Don Stewart. Thanks for watching.